So hello everyone. Welcome to this new session. So today we are going to discuss with one more important concept of force. This is force, okay? If it's not visible, I'm telling you. Force between differential current elements. Okay. Yeah. So this we are going to discuss, and uh, uh, along with that, uh, we have left a few topics in the module three. Okay. Uh, very simple and small topics. So magnetization and permeability and uh, magnetic field intensity. Okay. Those two topics uh, along with this we are going to discuss. Okay. So I had left that topic. I had forgot to do it. So please uh, let's uh, do that topic now. So before that, let's uh, do this topic that is force between differential current elements. So this is very very important. Uh, must uh, asked question in the exam multiple times repeated. Okay. So this is the simple notes that uh, uh, I have got. Okay. So I'm just going to explain this now. So now what is this force between differential current elements? Okay. So we know that in the word they have mentioned it as differential current elements. So we can see that we are having two of the differential current elements, I1 dl1 along with I2 dl2. Okay. And uh, the path which is separating the differential current, uh, the current element is called as R12. So here we can see these two lines, and here we have drawn one path that is called as R12. This is represented as loop one, and this is represented as loop two. Okay. And these are the two differential current uh, current elements uh, which are uh, moving in the opposite direction. That is, this is moving in this direction, I1 dl1, and this I2 dl2 is moving in this direction downwards. This is moving upwards. This is moving downwards. Okay. So this is all about the brief figure here. So now let's see the concept. The magnetic field at point Z uh, is the current element of point uh, one is given by dh two. That is, this is for, from this loop we can say that is given as dh two is equal to i one dl one cross ar one two. That is, ar one two represents the unit vector of this uh, uh, direction here which is specified divided by four pi into magnitude of r one two. Square. Okay, this is similar to the uh, uh, what to say Coulomb's law derivation, where in the denominator part we need to be uh, ha having the square of the magnitude that is R12 square of the two differential paths. Okay, so this in this way the magnetic field at point Z due to current element is given by dh. Okay, this formula uh, we need to remember. So now differential force on differential current element is also given by differential force. So we it will be represented it as dh vector. That is given as I D L I D L cross D vector, where this L is the length of this uh, two loop cross B. B represents the magnetic field intensity. Okay. Therefore, the differential force on current element due to the point Z is also given by D F two is equal to I two D L two cross D B two. Okay. So since here D B two is uh, corresponding to mu two into D H two, that is we know that B is uh, is equal to mu Mu times h, that is the property of magnetic uh, field in the uh, magnetic flux density, which we are going to discuss uh, in a few minutes later. So before that only, they have shown uh, uh, this relation that is d b two is equal to mu two into d h two. So this relation is again very important. This comes from the relation of b is equal to mu times h. Okay, that is the relation of magnetic uh, flux density. We need to be knowing. So since I have not discussed it, I am I am going to discuss that in this uh, video only. Okay, so to stay stay tuned. So we obtain force between two differential current elements. Okay, that is the the difference of that is derivative of this the differential current uh, force that is the uh, d f two is equal to mu naught times i one i two that is the current uh, induced by these two loops that is i one and i two divided by four pi into magnitude of r one two square that is the direction of uh, propagation. Its magnitude of R12 square, it's DL2 into DL1 cross AR12. Okay, this is given as the uh, uh, derivative of this differential current uh, element, differential force. So therefore, the total force between two filamentary circuits is obtained by integrating twice. Okay, so here we have since we have here d into d, so we have d square. So in order to eliminate that d square, we need to integrate this twice. So so we can get our force. Okay. That's why therefore force is equal to mu naught into i one i two divided by four pi take it outside it's a constant into the integral of this is the closed line integral line integral over a closed path is given by d l two cross again integration of d l one cross a r one a r one two divided by r one two square okay so therefore uh, if we simplify this this is the term which we obtain that is uh, f force f is given by mu naught into i one i two divided by four pi into 
integration of integration of again uh, dl2 uh, we need to take it uh, that side i've taken this uh, dl2 to the other side cross dl2 you can see here integration of ar12 cross dl1 divided by magnitude of r12 square into dl2 so this is the relation of differential force um, due to the differential current element so please note this formula down this is a very important uh, derivation and very important question also okay so this was all about force between differential current element okay hope you have understood this now we will uh, find the capacitance of capa capacitance of parallel plate capacitor uh, in rectangular coordinate system now consider on uh, three dynam three dimensional sphere in that two parallel plate capacitors are there now we need to find uh, capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor in rectangular coordinate system so consider three dimensional surface in that two plates of uh, capacitors are there one at y axis that is nothing but origin and another one is top of the z axis and these two are the boundary condition that i will tell you later then uh, we need to find capacitance that is c we know that c is equal to q by v first we need to find these two to get the c so consider rectangular coordinate system we know that del square v is equal to do square v by do x square plus do square v by do y square plus do square v do z square is equal to zero this is from laplace equation from here del square v is equal to zero then assume potential variation along z direction only this means we need to consider only z direction so we can neglect these two so remaining equation we got is this So this is the equation. Now apply integration on both sides. Here we need to integrate with respect to dz. So here dz will come. Then by integrating this, we get do v by do z is equal to integration of zero is zero and uh, dz is c one that is constant because here there is no limits. constant will come then from this we obtain this equation and we need to integrate again because uh, here d uh, do square is there so to remove the do we need to integrate twice by integrating this we get uh, v is equal to c1 z plus c2 take this as equation 1 and now apply boundary conditions these are the boundary conditions when uh, z is equal to 0 v is equal to 0 so apply in this v is equal to 0 c1 and z also is equal to 0 Plus c two. This is nothing. This will become c two is equal to zero. And uh, another condition is z is equal to d and v is equal to v not. Then uh, instead of uh, v, we substitute v not is equal to c one as it is, and uh, instead of d, z we substitute d. And C two as it is, and we know the value of C two that is zero, so we can neglect this. 
and uh, uh, d goes to this side so c1 is equal to v0 by d now substitute we know the uh, value of c2 and c1 so we can c1 now uh, we can substitute c1 c2 in equation 1 so this will become v is equal to v not z by d now we got got the v now we will find the q before finding q uh, first we need to find efi so this is the equation to find efi here uh, we can neglect ax and ay we need to consider only az so minus minus uh, rho v do v by do z az we know the value of v so we will substitute here by substituting that we get e is equal to minus v not by d az now we know that d is equal to epsilon e and here e is equal to this equation we will substitute here instead of e then we will get d is equal to minus epsilon v not by d az and uh, by taking magnitude uh, to the d we can uh, uh, replace this negative by plus this is equal to rho s rho s is surface charge density now we will find the uh, q this is the equation for q now we know that rho s is equal to plus epsilon uh, v not by d we just substituted here and a is area because it is a surface charge density this is area to find capacitance we know the formula c is equal to q by v and we know the value of uh, q and we know the value of v just substitute here by substituting that Uh, this equation will get and here v not v not get cancel and this is the final capacitance of a capacitor of a parallel of capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor